Well, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our uh, weekly webinar, Oregon Schools webinar. Um, kind of got a small group with us tonight, which was kind of expected. Uh, a lot's been going on, but I think uh, there's quite a few answers that have already been put out. So, so we have up to an hour uh, tonight to talk. Don't know if we'll need all that time, but we certainly want to uh, answer any questions that some of our uh, attendees have. Uh, we have about 11 attendees on right now, and, and again, my leadership team, our leadership team is, is available here tonight for questions, um, really related to anything that's going on within Oregon City Schools, and we'll do our best to address it uh, as, as we get through the night. And hopefully, you know, those of you that have been on a few of these, hopefully you found them uh, somewhat valuable. Um, we've had, you know, what we tried to be is, is as honest and transparent as we can as we all go through this COVID situation that we're going through. Uh, there still are many unanswered questions that certainly I have in my head. I think many of our leaders have a lot of unanswered questions uh, moving forward, but, but we're doing our best to, to answer those questions, I guess, one day at a time. And, and until we get into school, uh, it's going to be difficult to to know all the answers until we actually begin uh, living school in the COVID age uh, with with, you know, what comes next. Uh, just, you know, just to kind of talk a little bit about what's going on, you know, in our community right now. Um, Lucas County in general had a pretty good bill of health uh, over the last uh, week or so, just in general. Uh, cases are down. Uh, the spread is down. Those types of things. But for some reason, Oregon is a little bit of a worrisome place right now because of the article or, or some of the information you probably all heard about, about the levels of COVID in our, in our wastewater. I uh, don't know really much what that means or, you know, um, how that translates to, to people and cases that we know about. But what, what resulted from that was uh, a pop-up testing site that was uh, put in place for today, actually, that ran over at the Parks and Recreation Department. And uh, drive up, you know, anyone could go. It was open to everyone. Not sure uh, what kind of numbers they had. So I do expect to, to have a few more positive cases in Oregon just due to that, that we find out about. Uh, we've been seeing a little bit of an uptick with our staff. Uh, and a few of our students here in schools um, with exposure, not necessarily positive cases, but with uh, individuals not feeling well. And I think we're kind of moving into that time period where, you know, all these allergies and, and uh, flu type symptoms and all kinds of things start to hit. And I think we're starting to, to kind of move into that time where is it COVID or is it something else? And I will tell you, um, just about everybody that I talk to that doesn't feel well, whether it's a staff member or, or a parent or a student, their initial thought is, oh, it's just allergies. Oh, well, I just have, you know, an upset stomach or I ate something or whatever. So I just want to reiterate to at least the uh, group that's on the call tonight that, you know, think COVID first. It's the best protection for all of us 
if you uh, think COVID first and then it turns out not to be COVID, that will be wonderful for all of us because what we can't have happen is when we open school next Monday for our kids is that kids are coming in sick and, uh, and then they do happen to have COVID and it spreads like wildfire and, and we don't want that. I think everybody understands that and I feel very, very confident that, that people will uh, you know, do their best to, to keep the kids home when they aren't feeling well. Uh, our volleyball team uh, is shut down right now due to a positive COVID case. So we did have one student positive case. So that'll run its course for 14 days. Um, you know, obviously, you, you know, there's teams around the whole state and the country that are shut down. So it's, it's inevitable that it's going to happen. We are winding down the fall season. So we've been fortunate, I think, across the board to uh, get through the season uh, for the most part unscathed, I guess, if you will, at least in terms of COVID. And, uh, you know, we just got a few weeks left. So, so that's a, a good thing, I think. Um, we, you know, I just, on another note, aside from COVID, uh, I just want to kind of give an update. You know, I've been getting some questions about what does our enrollment look like related to COVID? Uh, have kids left? Are kids, you know, moving out? Those types of things. Um, really, uh, Mr. Quigg, one, one of our, our leaders, sent me a, a report today, and as a district, we're down 3.36% as of this week in terms of enrollment, but that's very good, I think. Uh, the average is, is probably several points above that. I haven't actually figured out the average of the state yet, but overall, I think we're doing very, very well. We've, we've lost some kids, about 160 kids or so out to other districts and to some charter schools, but I think most of that was really uh, dependent on what their family situations were. So hopefully we'll regain some of those kids back. But for the most part, we have our kids in our schools. Our digital academy, uh, when we made the announcement to come back to school, uh, we still haven't seen a, a high number of kids wanting to stay remote. Uh, we're gonna have the vast majority of our students returning to in-person education starting next Monday with K-6, and then in a couple of weeks later, seven through 12. I feel very good about that. Um, I can't thank this group that you're seeing in front of you enough for the hours and hours of time and, and thought put into what we're about to do for our kids in terms of preparing our buildings, mentally preparing, uh, having processes in place to, to bring our kids back as safe as possible. Um, we're gonna be ready. We may not feel ready, but we're gonna be ready. And uh, we're excited to get the kids back. I, I think families in general are excited to, to get school back to, to uh, as close to normal as possible. So with that, uh, I'm gonna jump into the questions right now. And I see we have, we have about 16 attendees on the line here. So uh, we have a couple of questions. So we'll just jump into those. And, and again, team, feel free to jump in and help me out here if uh, you can to answer some of these questions as we, as we move through this. So uh, first question is, will the kids need to bring their Chrome back, back and forth uh, to school during hybrid? I know that question came up last week. And personally, I've not had any further discussion on that. I don't know if we've had any additional discussions within the uh, principals. I don't know, Ms. Giovanni, have you had any conversations with that or Mrs. Conco or any of the principals? Um, at STAR, we're planning on um, having them come back and forth. Okay. Um, when we come back. So um, we're just going to, I'm, I was going to put it in the school newsletter to make sure that they're charged when they come, they won't need to bring their chargers, but um, right now that's the plan. So we'll get word out then how that's gonna work uh, throughout the buildings for the most part. Is that kind of the plan? And, and is the plan kind of to bring them back and forth? Yeah, at Eisenhower as well, uh, and, and uh, we have some information out on that and we'll put out uh, additional. Um, so yes, back and forth, both in the hybrid and in the all-in. And just so parents know, just as an added piece of information, um, if the students are charging the Chromebooks at home uh, the night before, they will last well into the day and into the next evening. The batteries are very good. And so they shouldn't need to, set, to bring their chargers in like uh, Mrs. Solta said. Uh, they should last the entire day. And if they don't, we'll have a couple chargers to at least get them through. Is that, I'm sure, the plan a little bit. 
Uh, yeah, one so thing, oh, Mr. Gregory, at, at Jerusalem, the teachers, each team is going to make that decision. So they will be letting the parents know. At this point, I would anticipate during hybrid, the devices will be staying at home and then probably coming back when we return all in. But that will be communicated by each set of teachers. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. If my son at Facet needs to be quarantined, will my son at Clay have to be quarantined too? Also, also, how will they be getting classwork uh, teaching that they would be missing while not in class? So, so yeah. So my my day and many of our day uh, in the last week or so has been uh, talking about this nonstop. Uh, we're dealing with it firsthand right now. I mean, across the district and every district is dealing with it uh, firsthand. So I'm, I'm going to do my best at a very simple answer. And, and if, I, if I goof it up, guys, please, please uh, correct me. So the first part of your question was, is if one, essentially one son at a, at a school uh, is quarantined, then will the other son be quarantined? So I think there's, it's, it's a two-part answer. One, if your son at Facet is sick, okay, has symptoms of COVID, right, is, is physically ill, then we're going to recommend that the entire family stays quarantined until we know what your son, let's say, at Facet has. If, we, if he goes to the doctor and it is not COVID, it is something else, then, then the other family members can be let out of quarantine and, and your son at FACET has to be symptom free for at least 24 hours and certainly fever free for at least 24 hours. Now, that's if he's ill. If he is not ill, okay, and your son, let's say, is exposed to a student in his class who was ill, okay, so that other student who is ill is like person zero, your son becomes person one. Person one is quarantined, but his brother becomes person two. He is not quarantined. Does that make sense? In a simplest of way, it's so much more complicated than that. And at the end of the day, we, you will have a personal call from either our school nurse one of our administrators or our district nurse, Sherry Sexton, and you will know, you won't be left to your own thought process on what to do next. And if it's, if it's a case of, of COVID, we, if, let's say we find out that that student zero has COVID, then the, even the health department is going to be getting involved in contact tracing all those individuals that were near that student. Okay, so that's question number one. And again, it's, that's the simplest answer to a very complicated thing, especially when you start talking about lots of kids. Second part of the question was, how will they be getting work and classwork? So right now, um, that's gonna be very individualized, but we're gonna treat kids that are quarantined as if we, like we've treated kids who have been ill in the past when they're home, and we're gonna provide schoolwork for those kids uh, to do while they're at home. Now, how that schoolwork is provided may look different from classroom to classroom or individual to individual. We are hoping that we're consistently using our Schoology and Google, um, the Google program, Google, uh, I always forget the Google, Google Classroom, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I always wanna say Google Meet because that's what I use every day uh, for our kids so they can stay on top. And we will have probably teachers around the district make videos and, uh, you know, share those videos of some lessons. Now, that's not going to be an absolute mandate. We're not looking at doing live streaming uh, throughout the district on a regular basis. We may have some of that going on. Um, it becomes very tricky when we get into recording and when we get into live streaming uh, across the district. So we're, again, we're still working through all that. And that's one of those things that as we get into this, um, we're going to learn along with you. And, and I, again, I, I beg for your patience like you've, you've had throughout this first quarter as we move into the second quarter, because we're going to all be learning together on how this, how this works, especially as kids are going in and out of the school district.
you know, I mean, kids go in and out on a regular basis, but they're not going in and out in the possible groups that, that we may experience here when school starts back up. So hopefully I answered that question. Anybody want to add to the schoolwork, classroom work? Okay. Okay, next question. Uh, I have a fifth grader who has never been to Eisenhower. How will, how will he know where to go and what to do when he arrives there for the first time? So Mr. Holcomb, I know you have some thoughts. Sure. Last week I answered this question a little differently than I will this week. Um, the, the first step is on Sunday, you'll get uh, an email and it will have a lot of information on about that. Uh, kids will get emails about it before Sunday. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, a building map sent to them with color coded for their first period class for the class that they need to get to. We'll ask them to take a look at that and we'll, we'll kind of number hallways and talk to them about which hallways to walk in. We'll have adults all the way through the hallways uh, to guide them where they need to be. So they'll just need to know their first period teacher's name and uh, if they remember the color too that will help them uh, navigate and find it on the door. And the teachers will be in the hallway uh, and we'll be, we'll be uh, swooping people uh, into the place uh, that they need to be. So, so in general, uh, we're gonna have obviously new kids to, to many of the buildings. So I know there's some other ideas. I don't know if any of the other principals just in general wanna talk about you know, the new kids to your buildings, just some thoughts that you might be uh, having and how you're going to handle that. I know like at the elementaries, at least the kindergartners have come in and had an experience already earlier in the school year. So I think it'll be a little bit, of course, we're always going to help these little babies into the classroom and, you know, make sure they get where they need to go. But uh, I don't know, uh, Mr. Jersky or Mr. Gibbs, if you want to maybe just address what you're thinking. Sure, I can. Um, we plan to do um, a tour, at least have an opportunity for freshmen to sign up for a tour on a couple different dates, um, similar to what we've done with the Chromebook distribution of using Sign Up Genius so we can contact Trace and all that other good stuff that's involved uh, with bringing kids in the building. Uh, I'm currently waiting to see how many student volunteers I would have from NHS, student government, um, volunteer focus, anyone like that. Uh, so information will be given out by the end of next week. And, and like I said, we're going to have a sign up for kids to sign up to come in at different times, but definitely looking at something to get the freshmen acclimated to Clay High School and their directional uh, for the hallways and things like that. So we will have them in the building though before all 1200, 1100 students get in the building. And I think it's fair to say no matter what we do, freshmen get lost the first week. It's just part of the experience that you have when you go to Clay. And uh, you have to learn how to ask for help, and then you'll get it. So we'll make sure they all get to where they need to go. We haven't lost one yet, Mr. No, nope, we haven't Pepper. lost one. <laughs> for not too long, anyways. So anybody else buy anything, or are we good? I mean... Yeah, sure. We um, FS is similar to Eisenhower. Um, we we plan to have a lot of staff on hand to help out with directions. Um, we'll also have some videos, not just on locations, but also some of the expectations that they're you know they're not going to experience um, before they get to, to school, like the arrival process, FS, it, and things of that nature. We'll have videos that we push out to them, uh, and then you know our seventh graders coming in had the advantage of. Uh, coming last January, so we were able to get that visit oh. in. So they're they're fairly familiar, I, I feel, um, with the layout. In addition to the fact that the facet building uh, is the exact same uh, building as I, Eisenhower, with the exception of you know some location. So it'll look really familiar to them, I feel, and uh, they'll be just fine. Good, awesome. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, all right, so yeah, this question I know I got emailed, I, I think maybe even by the same uh, a person here, w will high school students who uh, must switch to Digital Academy be given credit for work completed? So just, just to answer that very, very lightly, I've got a meeting scheduled. Uh, I had some conversations today uh, with, a, with some of the high school leaders. We're gonna have a little bit more formal conversation on Monday. Uh, again, it's, a, it's one of those impacts that we uh, need to talk through and and there's a lot of implications as to what what we do and how we do it and when we do it and you know this is one of those situations where the dots aren't very lined up so we got to figure out the puzzle 
and, uh, and, and make sure that the, that the puzzle is fitting correctly and, and doing what we need it to do. So uh, give me some time on that, give us some time on that, and we'll, we'll follow up uh, next week on that one. Uh, next question is again about quarantine, uh, counting against us in attendance. Yeah, we've had a lot of conversations. Quarantine is not gonna count against anybody's attendance negatively. Um, we're not even sure how to keep attendance. I mean, we're keeping attendance, but it's been so different. And we've, we, we, you know, we're, we're, we're working through how we're gonna get there once we get all the kids back and it'll be you know a lot easier more traditional type of attendance for us but uh kids who are in quarantine because of either us or the health department are not going to be counted uh, uh absent if you will or unexcused but they will be responsible for their work so we are going to be expecting students that even though they're quarantined it's not a free two weeks off or whatever number of days it turns out to be i mean they got to do some work so we all need to be flexible. Uh, we all need to understand what's happening. But, uh, but no, the answer to that question is attendance will, or, or they won't be counted as unexcused absences. They may be entered as absences, but they won't be counted against the student in any way. Uh, well, not a question, but I think a very positive comment. I, I cannot thank uh, you all enough for all you have done and will continue to do. I cannot imagine having to make some of the decisions during this time. Thank you for caring about my kids and health, my kids' health and education. I'm so proud to have my kids in OCS. Well, we're proud to have your kids. Uh, you know, we're proud to get all of our kids back. Um, you know, this is still not sure how long uh, everything will stay the way it is. I hope the rest of the school year. I just want to reiterate to the people on the call that, you know, um, we don't know what lies ahead. We have a plan. We've stuck to our plans for the most part moving forward. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to do everything we can to mitigate the risk, but that risk is still there. So uh, I do want to share one thing though. Um, I'm going to switch real quick to screen sharing mode because I just want to share with those of you that are on here. We've not made this announcement, but I think it's a pretty uh, a pretty positive announcement that we're going to be purchasing uh, a number, actually uh, not just a number, we're going to be purchasing a tri-fold uh, student barrier uh, for every single uh, student that we have in the district. Um, I'm gonna try to share here. Okay, can you guys see that picture? Anybody shake their head? Okay, I just need somebody to shake their head so I can see it. Okay, so this is just a sample of what we're getting. And you guys have seen these, I'm sure. But we've had a lot of back and forth discussion within the district as to whether this would be a benefit or too much of a distraction uh, for our students and for our teaching staff. But we landed on the side of caution and the side of safety, and we ended up buying these for every student in the district. We have ordered 3,600 of these to go across the district at a considerable expense. But that expense is well worth it if it can protect our kids and protect our staff. So those won't be here though, most likely till the start of, we're hoping, fingers crossed, that they'll be here by the time we start hybrid for grades seven through 12, so around that 19th. Uh, but we, we anticipate having enough here to at least uh, get in the schools for our K through six kids that are coming back that same day um, all in. So I just wanted to share that, that exciting news. Again, it also leads to some logistical questions that we are all trying to figure out because they're going to have little handles. Some, there may be times we're going to ask your kids to carry them from class to class, um, you know, as their own personal little shield. So again, that'll be another thing that we're going to have to work out um, and it may be cumbersome and it may be a little bit um, hard for some kids, but uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're at least giving ourselves every opportunity possible to protect our kids. Because as I've said often, you know, we're not going to have six foot of distance when we bring all our kids back anywhere. I mean, maybe a few classrooms. We're going to do our darndest to have three. I feel confident in three. Uh, but we're not going to have six. So that means that kids are going to be closer to each other than, than maybe we want. 
but the trade-off is getting kids back in school and having a little bit of uh, you know change in how how school is operated. So I'm I'm really proud and excited. And 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 again, it was debated pretty pretty strongly with everybody in this group about whether it was a good move or bad move. But I think at the end of the day, we'll have them and uh, and we'll we'll use them wisely. And just so everyone knows. Uh, we did use the, the Federal CARES Act money, which specifically came to us above and beyond any of our locally generated or state generated funds for these purchases. So uh, the money was intended for this, per this type of purchase, and uh, that's what we, we did with the money. And it wasn't just this. We didn't spend $190,000 on those plastic shields. It was other things that we're buying too, but, but uh, it was significant. Um, Okay, well, that's kind of the end of our questions. There is one, uh, thank you for responding. You're in a tough spot and I appreciate your assistance. Yeah, uh, and again, I understand that where you're at uh, coming from a parent and uh, we're going to, you know, obviously look into it and, and, and try to do it right. Um, another one, thank you for answering all my questions and working so hard to keep our kids safe. I truly appreciate all that and all you do. Uh, you know, and, and that's been, although there's been some bumps along the way in the last three months and, and, and uh, you've seen them, you've heard them, you've read them, you've listened to them. At the end of the day, I'm hoping that all kind of is behind us and then we can move forward as a community and, and as, a, as a staff and certainly for students and uh, have a, a wonderful rest of the year. And <laughs> I think we all want to put 2020 behind us. I know I do and uh, get a fresh 2021 and, and, and go from there. So this is going to be a, uh, we're gonna end our, at least our weekly forums at this point. We have no more scheduled moving forward, but, but I do intend to have some moving forward, just not sure where and when, but it, we'll, we'll know when we feel like there's something bubbling out there that we need to maybe have a community forum. I appreciate those of you that jumped on uh, regularly. I saw a lot of the same names, so uh, engagement and everything. Schools can't be schools without their families and their community. So. Uh, Everybody, we, we're, unless there's any more questions, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for tonight. Uh, I actually see a little bit of sun peeking out right now, which is hard to believe with the weather that we've been having the last couple hours. So uh, maybe our high school soccer game at 7 will have a little bit more pleasant experience than the 5 o'clock game. So have a great uh, rest of the week, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight, and uh, we'll talk soon. Good luck on Monday, everybody. Kids will be back. <laughs> Thank you.